will be the race. Welcome back. You're looking at the face here of a 24-year-old in his first Tour de France. His name is Mikhail Ignatiev, a former World Junior Time Trial Champion and uh, recently second in his country's National Time Trial Championships in Russia. He's trying to hold them all off. Michael Rogers is driving at the front now. Michael had two uh, unshipped chains in the time trial yesterday. I did them a little bit of an injustice in the commentary because of the former three-time world time trial champion. I thought he did a rather bad time trial, but now we find he unshipped his chain twice and he is driving on the front to try and bring Mark Cavendish to the finish in first place. Well, I think Mickey Rogers, if he hadn't had those mechanical incidents out on the course, Bill, could have seen himself finishing inside of the top 15 and he probably would have been fairly satisfied with that the team Columbia high road have got a big control over the front end of the main field but they don't really they're not really concerned about this guy at the moment they don't really want to catch him till four or five kilometers to go and then they will start to set up the train the train of all of the riders that they've got left in the main field to set up the pacemaking on the run in towards the finish and try and make sure that they can just put Mark Cavendish in an ideal position with three or four hundred meters to go to unleash that sprint of his which has won him so many races since he turned professional. It's hard to believe, Phil, he's only 24 years of age. And so is the guy in the lead. And, uh, you know, it's so hard. He's trying to hold off 179, the world's greatest riders, by himself. They're all hiding behind a couple of guys on the front and just pedaling along, whistling. And this guy at the front, he's got his head down and he's trying to do it. He's gambling that they will hesitate in the reaction. He knows if they react, they'll wipe him out. He's only 13 seconds ahead. But very often, the in fight start who is going to make the first move who will hunt him down and waste the energy while the others follow and there's always that moment of hesitation and boy that guy's got the qualities to hold them off he reminds me of his countryman Vyacheslav Ekimov who rode away from the bunch in 1991 at Macon and won well, I tell you what, Yatislav Ekimov was an ex extremely special bike rider, but when he won that stage into Macon, he took off with around about five kilometers to go. And to do that, to hold off a main field, you've got to be able to ride at around about 40 miles an hour. There's a new line of riders uh, coming up alongside the, there. You can see Lance Armstrong once again comfortably in the main field, enjoying himself, he says. And that's how he describes his participation in the Tour de France this year. But I noticed that Team Milram were moving up alongside Team Colombia. Now, strangely enough, last year, uh, Gerard Cholik just happened to be a teammate of Mark Cavendish, so maybe there's going to be a little bit of a revenge match on here. Well, the thing was that with Mark on the team, Gerald Cholik wasn't getting too many big results. There they are, the boys in blue, and now they're looking to try and give Gerald uh, Cholik a lead out to the line. There'll be a twist of irony there if he managed to get over the top of Mark Cavendish at the finish. Silence Lotto are also breaking in. They've got a good sprinter in Greg Van Avermaet. He's also in his first Tour de France. Now that team is led by the Australian Cadell Evans as are we now under the five kilometre to go banner and they're coming just gone under five kilometres to go and this young man has held them off for a couple of kilometres but it's all over now Ignatiev is swept aside by Team Columbia HCT we're down back to the sprinters well, the sprinters there, there's two lines of sprinters on the left in the yellow, white and black. It's Team Columbia HTC, the team of Mark, Mark Cavendish in the pale blue and white over to the right-hand side. That is Team Milram. Thereafter, Gerard Cholik. None of the other big teams of the sprinters have yet got themselves organized. I'm looking and I've just spotted the red, yellow and black jersey of the champion of Belgium. Right in the middle, moving and barging his way through there is big Tom Bonin. Tom Bone, and there he is in the black top to his brand new national title jersey. He won it a week to go today for the first time, which is amazing because he's been a great bike rider out of Belgium. The line moving smoothly up on the yellow side. That's Team Columbia. The last man is Mark Cavendish. If you can't recognize Mark, try his number. It's 71. Milrammer trying to guide through uh, Gerald Cholik, his ex teammate. Lamprey are getting in on the act now because they've got Daniela Bernate. They are the Mauve and Blue teams. This 
this is going to be a great battle. Bert Grabsch is also in there as well, the world time trial champion. For the oh, moment. sorry, that's uh, Balland, of course, is, is the world time trial, world road well, race champion. But Milleram have got control on the front end of the main field for the moment, but once they get closer to the finish, you may well start to see the acceleration coming from Team Columbia. There's George Hinkepi in the yellow and white sunglasses, just popping over the top, making sure he keeps his man, Mark Cavendish, out of danger, out of any possibility of being caught in an incident and slipping back down through the main field because if you have to put your brakes on at this point in the race at three kilometers to go you'll go from fifth position to 55th position and lose all chances of winning the bike race look how close everybody's now starting to get together inside of three kilometers to go it's still Milram have got the control at the front end of the main field but over on the left there's a new line starting to come up and that's the team that was brought in as a wild card that's team skill Shimano well, they're going to have a, a little bit of luck and help if they're going to break through this lot right now. Team Milran seem to me as though they feel they've got the, uh, the man on the team today. Uh, Michael Rogers is still in there as well. Milram and uh, Team Columbia have got it. Um, and you're right about Skill Shimano, Paul. They are trying to break into this. They have got the fast finishes, but uh, people like Kenny Van Hummel, who's had a few wins this year, four indeed. Well, they see now we're losing the teammates now. They make the effort as fast as they can. The reason they keep the speed up is to stop the movement off the front of the pack. But you can only go so far. Amazingly, these guys are human. They get tired. When they get tired, they have to get out of the way. It's amazing that a rider can just give himself complete and utter devotion for his teammate, who he knows is sitting behind. And that's why a guy can ride on the front for around about uh, two, three hundred meters at 50 to 60 kilometers an hour. And yes, at two kilometers to go, once you are done you just swing off and leave it up to somebody else now it's columbia hct on the front now getting control once more george hincap he's up into about fourth position behind him i would predict it's mark renshaw right. behind mark renshaw it's going to be mark cavendish the rush coming on the left again looks like boy telecom are trying to break in on this too the french setup you can see the flashes on the arms of Gerald Torek and they're bumping and barging. That's Tyler Farrar being brought to the front, up to the right of our picture in those orange jerseys. The American, now look at the anxious face of Cavendish. This is where you've got to be careful. This is about just over a kilometre out from the finish. That's the big split. Now it's eyes down for a big straight run in here as it all comes together on the other side of the roundabout. Chance for a reshuffle. And Michael Rogers has got control at the front now. Team Garman. But Farrar is here and Julian. Julian Dean too. That's Julian Dean right in front of Ferrar in the orange. Little bouncy and bargy going there. Julian Dean now has decided he's going to move to the front and see if he can get his, his American teammate up into an ideal position. It's Julian Dean and Danny Pater are going to try and lift up the pace making bumping and barging, trying to get onto the wheel of Paul George Hincapi. There was a nasty kick in the middle there that pushed Tom Bonin over the road but he's corrected it now. Cholik is on his shoulder. They've gone extremely wide there and I think some have gone off the course. They went straight on. They didn't make the right hand and the Police had to jump for it. Slight split in the peloton now, but this is the final lead out. Cavendish sits third wheel. This surely, Ferrari is tucked in on it. They have a little lead over the rest of the field. This is the bend they will come up. They will then see the line. It's Columbia, one, two, three, the last lead out from Mark Renshaw. This is a formality for the Isle of Man. And now Cavendish is launched. The missile fires again. Nobody will get to him as he puts his head down. Tyler Ferrari will ride in his slipstream. But now Cavendish is going to get his first win of the, nine of the Tour de France 2009 and Tyler Farrar an excellent second place. What a run into the finish that was. A little bit of chaos with about 750 metres to go but you see Team Columbia high road field. They never panicked at all. They kept control of the front end of the main field. That's why you've got to keep your men in the first 15 to 20 places. This man is going to be a great sprinter over the next uh, 10 years or so. Mark Cavendish getting his fifth stage victory at the Tour de France. That record for Great Britain of eight, Phil, is looking very attainable in 2009. Well, it was just too perfect for words. It's in the great tradition of team sprinting. The days of Alessandro Bertacchi, of Mario Cipollini, the big sprinters. This is the new boy now. He, as Paul said, has now won a fifth stage of the Tour de France and approaches Barry Hoban's record of eight. But it was so perfect Perfect call. They could have almost have got first, second and third. For Rado, hats off to him. He used the Colombian team.
team tactics and it was almost good enough for him. Too. And I tell you what, if it hadn't been for Julian Dean uh, taking him through like a pile of fish, he wouldn't have got him right up to the wheel of Mark Cavendish there. But just look at this. This is the man they call the Manx Missile, the fastest man in the world. He says that when he looks in the mirror, he can't believe that he's a fast sprinter. Well, I tell you what, when you look at this image here, you realize this man is very fast indeed. He is a rapid sprinter, whether it's from the front or the back, he knows exactly how to get the wins. I think it was probably Roman Failure there of Agutubel, who just got himself into the uh, third place slot. The bells are ringing, Sunday here in Brignol, the race is now in town. There is Fabian Cancellari. He did well to stay out of that, but of course he finished in the group. Everybody gets the same time. He's making his way now, of course, behind the stands, uh, where he will get his next yellow jersey. It's been confirmed that Felu was in third place. Torhoshoff got the fourth. And what a good sprint by one of the only two Japanese riders in the race for B-Box. Uh, Alashiro has come home next. That's, an, that's a very... I didn't know who he was, I admit. I couldn't see him. Now, this is the result of the prang up as they made the right-hander. And uh, we now have a candidate for the Olympic Games with that local policeman because he jumped well. Let's have another look at this now. Right in the middle, overshot. That's where it was time to move, boys, because somebody went straight on. Uh, happily, and as far as we know, all OK. And they will all get the same time because that's why we have the rule of accidents in the closing three kilometres. Well, one of the riders involved in that crash, the rider just walking across the line there, was the big sprinter from uh, Katusha. That was Danilo Napolitano. Uh, yeah. And he was obviously caught up in that little bit of a, a moment when they went the wrong way. It didn't look to me as if it was that dangerous uh, a corner. It was more of a sweeping bend than anything else. Well, uh, but 70, it caught one or two out by surprise. 70 kilometres an hour, Paul. <laughs> Yes, at 70 kilometres now, that is rather a special uh, way to get round the bend. But at least uh, the Politano, where that crash happened, was too far back to have affected the result today, that's for sure. And we're just going to wait now to get everybody organised down there for the prize presentation. We're staying with the pictures. These are live, of course. We are now in the town of Brignol for the very first time. And, uh, boy, is he fast or what? And uh, the same has to be said for Tyler Farrar. His first Tour de France, remember? And he gets a fine second place at the first chance he's had, the first road race stage of this year's event. And Tyler Farrar, I think, if he gets the card shuffle right, might well take a stage win before we get to Paris. And give the Garmin slipstream something to uh, be very pleased about, because they're still in the hunt for the next yellow jersey when we get to the team time trial on Tuesday. Well, we've shown you enough of the town. This is the Manx Missile winning his first stage of the 2009 Tour de France. We'll take a break, and when we come back, prizes, presentations, any interviews we can grab for you, stay with us here live on Versus. See you in a moment. Welcome back. We're looking down on the town of Brignol, a first on-time visit for the Tour de France after 187 kilometres coming in from Monaco. And the Manx missile was fired again to success today by his team Columbia. Uh, they brought the rider to the line, they launched him, nobody could get near him. And he's got his first stage win in this year's Tour de France. He is a remarkable sprinter. Tyler Farrar grabbed his wheel but couldn't get past it. Neither could Roman Failure in third place in that blue jersey. Congratulations all round from the team that loves Mark because he delivers. Big hugs here for Michael Rogers of Australia who did a lot of work in those closing kilometres. He seeks out all of the team one by one. Let's have a look then, see if we can find you the stage results so far. Four and a half hours today, everybody given the same time. Farrar second. Pellieu was the blue jersey sprinter from Agri to Bell. Torhoshoff tried, made fourth. Brilliant result for Arashiro of the Boy Telecom squad. 